Vicky. I'm glad you're here. Today I have a massive art haul and I wanted to just go through a few things with you and do some swatching and talk about some of the new supplies I have ordered and purchased and they have arrived. <laughs> so I'll start off with my ink tense pencils. I bought a set of 12 and I've already done a swatch and I'm going to just go into that now and add some pure pencil down this line. I've let it dry. I've pulled it out with my water and now I'm going to just go in with pure shades and I'll talk about the colors as we go. So the first one is Sun Yellow and this is 0200. So these are made by Derwent and they are watercolor pencils and as the name suggests ink tense means they give you very intense color. So I'm putting in that full color at the very beginning so that I can get more of an idea of what they would look like if I were to just draw with them. So this is Tangerine and this is 0300 Tangerine. They are yummy bright colors, I have to say. They're not cheap, but I have heard a lot of people use these and swear by them, so I thought, I'll give them a go and I'll just start with the 12 set. With my Prismacolors I have the 150 set and it's wonderful to have all those colours but really you don't need that many. <laughs> I bought it at a very good price, I think it was a half price sale and um, so I went for broke and got the whole 150 colours. But with these ink tents I really thought I'll start off small. I can always add to them later on if I want to. So that's Poppy Red, which is 0400. The next one is Fuchsia. You can see how beautifully they lay down just as a pencil. So there's Fuchsia. I'll shade that out a little bit. Okay, Fuchsia 0700. And the next one is Deep Indigo. I imagine it's almost a blackish looking color very deep yes here it is deep indigo one one zero zero so i plan on using my ink tense pencils part of my make mark making um i have actually used them in one of my paintings i'll just bring it down and show you the one that i used the ink tense pencils in just get it off the wall there this one this was inspired by a class I did with Jocelyn Benford. So if you haven't seen Jocelyn's work, have a look. She's just amazing. I love her paintings. And this was inspired by one of the classes I took in person with her. But you can see this is ink tense here. This one here is an ink tense pencil. And I do believe it is deep indigo. <laughs> so that's how it comes up. You can draw into your paint. Um, this one I think is maybe ink black inside here this is ink black and you can use it into wet paint and get these really fun effects so here's deep indigo really deep and dark it almost looks black but it is blue let's pull that out a little bit there okay so that's one one zero zero now sea blue uh this one here good for underwater scenes sea blue I'll show you this one coming in nice and deep and this is one two zero zero now teal green is the next one which is sort of like a I would call it like a viridian color this is one three zero zero so they're heavily pigmented and they are very intense colors and they're lovely to work with and when you use them with water, this one here shows a little bit of the lines underneath, so does the black, but I was working quite quickly in this. I think if you took a bit of time with it, you could actually get rid of those pencil marks and just have a pure wash. So next one up is apple green. I'll move this up a bit so you can see. Are we in frame? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay, apple green. This is 1400. 
another nice yummy color and leaf green is the next one it's always handy to have a green um, if you are nervous about drawing stems with your watercolors then this is a good tip for you leaf green is 1600 and it's like an olive color very nice and you can see how these two colors together the apple green and the leaf green you could layer them up and make some nice watercolor leaves and stems and just draw out the colors so there's your leaf green and i'm going to give you a demonstration of using these paints with my little stamp that i have up here and i'll talk about these in a minute too because these are all part of the art haul that i had this week so the next one's baked earth what a great color and what a great name i love that name baked earth 1800 that is a very descriptive name love it look at this brown oh wow it's a really warm brown sort of orangey undertones lovely love 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 it that's really nice one of my favorites i think out of this whole set then there's bark uh, let me see if i can find it oh it's very dark i think this might be our black that's the black i think it must be this one maybe it's a dark brown okay so bark is a dark brown and it's two zero 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 and it's really dark and again you can combine these two colors to make some really nice stems or trees or something like that <clears throat> something like that excuse me and then our last but not least is ink black so pure black So there's our Derwent Ink Tense pencils swatched out. Okay, now let's have a look before I get into swatching with this little stamp here, some of the other things that I managed to pick up. So I picked up this Molotto masking fluid pen and I'm going to give that a little try in my play journal. I have a play swatch book. This is the one that's the messy one, it just has everything in it. And I just thought I'll try it just on a little area here. Okay, so like any paint pen, you have to prime it by shaking it up and down. And look at that. So I'm going to make some dots with it and test this out with some watercolors over the top. I'm just going to make some circles and I might make a wiggly line and turn it into a little round shape and i'll let that dry and i'll come back to it and we'll have a look and see what this can do i've heard very good things about this so it's a molotow graphics art masking liquid pump marker this is the four millimeter nib so they must come in different nib sizes this was the only one the store had while we're on masking and things like that i also have an eraser a mono zero Ooh, let's try and get that in there we go in frame mono zero eraser from Tombow so it has this teeny tiny little tip so you can erase that way or you can erase that way and it has like a pump action where you can keep pushing the eraser down I won't push it well let's let's bring it down one more there we go so you can see it pushes down as you use it it comes further out and it's very very precise so i think that's a really useful thing to have that's from tombow okay i'm going to let that masking fluid dry and i'm going to come over to my brushes so i have some princeton snap brushes here and i'm thrilled with these zero to six round and an angle shader which is three quarters of an inch so it's a really nice big one so that's going to be able to give me some nice lines if I put it on its edge. And as well as those, I got a large round. The biggest they had was a 12. I would have liked a 16, but they didn't have any in stock. So I'll probably get a 16 at some point. But these have a wonderful white tack on. 
tip on them and they're called snap brushes because they snap back into a fine point. The other thing I have down here with my mark making is free. <laughs> I found this outside just before I started the video. I've been looking for a twig to do some mark making with and I wanted a nice straight twig and it's got a couple of different mark making shapes up here and it's got this very jagged sort of point up here so you could dip it in your paint and get two lines at once and it was just how I broke it off the tree so there's a tip for you pick up some twigs they're great for mark making okay before we get onto the stamps I wanted to talk about the pencils so these are general scribe all all surface pencils water soluble aquarelle white writes on glass metal plastic and wood so i have one in white and one in black and again these are great for any kind of mark making these are generals scribe all all surface pencils in black and white and they're great for painting into your paintings as well once they're dry they don't work so well on wet paint but when you dry you can paint those in and they're good so some Sakura pens, I have silver pen touch, and this is two millimeters. So I'm going to write um, on this in the book since it's open. I'm going to put some silver in here. And I've just been writing with it, so I don't need to prime it up. But you can see how that can give you some nice details. going to do a nice little flower there in the silver and maybe another little one up here so when that dries that will be a nice shiny silver let's go with the gold in the pen touch I have the gold as well this is two millimeters so the silver was two millimeters so they're both the same size so let's go with the gold, and I'm thinking I'm going to combine silver and gold together. And I'm going to colour in with the gold inside there, just for something a bit different. Get your little two-tone flower happening. And I'll let that dry and come back and show you what that's like. I also have a calligraphy pen from Sakura. And this is five millimeters and this has a calligraphy nib on it. It has the thick side and the thin side for making thin and thick strokes. So I'll just do a down stroke with the thick side and turn it and do an up stroke with the thin side. So I'll try and do that a little bit tidier. There we go. So you can do some shapes for calligraphy with this where you're going up and then turn it on its side and come down for the thick stroke and then back on its side again and that's wobbly um, I could probably do better than that if I put my mind to it but that's just a quick look at the pen touch calligrapher in five millimeters and I have some Posca pens in white um, not having a lot of joy with my gel pens. A lot of my gel pens have dried up and I think it's because, I'll just get some out of here. These are lovely gel pens, but I did not put the tops on firmly enough. I just sort of put them in there and the air got to them and one of them has dried up completely. The others are okay, but just be aware with any paint pens or gel pens, you really need to take good care of them. So keep them out of the light too is helpful. So these are Posca pens, 1.3 millimetres, a 0.1 of a millimetre and a 2.5 millimetres. So I have some fine, medium and broad there. So that's great. They're going to be really good for my mark making as well. I won't open those because they are paint pens and I just want to leave them as they are. I got myself another field watercolour journal so I've got a nice little new one to work in. This is cute size, look at this. So this is 24 sheets 
and it's 15.2 centimeters square it's cold press 300 gsm so it's the same kind of journal that i use for my swatching in my main swatch book beautiful paper to work in where are we have i got everything oh prismacolor pencil sharpener so i thought this would be interesting it has two sides on it, it has a little lid that opens like this this comes out i've been using it this morning just to sharpen those ink tense pencils so let's find one that needs sharpening probably probably the bark is a little bit dull so it has two versions it has the very long version well it's not as long as some artist pencils I'm just going to do, because these are watercolour pencils, I'm just going to do the regular size sharpening on it. And that's quite nice. So that's handy to have. But I did want those for that for my Prismacolor pencils as well. Okay. Stamps. Let's talk stamps. I have a darkroom door stamp here, which is absolutely gorgeous. I really love this. I'm going to be making some watercolour cards with this. I love the sayings. They do have wonderful quotes, Darkroom Door. I have quite a few of their quote stamps as well. Just gorgeous stamps all around. This is an Australian stamp company designed by Rachel Grieg. She's a lovely lady, Rachel. I was lucky enough to meet her at a craft fair about four years ago. She had the most amazing booth and so many gorgeous, very arty cards, very different from what you would see generally in card making. They're very out there and she is a photographer and she does a lot of these beautiful photo real images in the stamps. So I'm, I'm really loving this quote here. Life is like a camera, just focus on what's important and capture the good times, develop from the negatives and if things don't work out, just take another shot. I mean, really, that is just so empowering, that quote, I love it, and capture life. So I'm going to be doing a whole lot of watercolour cards with this stamp set. But for now, I'm going to get onto this little one here. This is by Kate Crane. Now, I bought this from a scrapbook store that was closing down. I think it's quite an old stamp, but I just love it. And I thought it would be perfect for using to swatch out the Inktense pencils in a little design for you. It's a beautiful rubber stamp very old school lovely to hold in your hand and that's the one i'm going to use for the swatching this is my messy swatch book where i swatch out everything that i have this is my play session book where i just play with it before it goes into my more professional looking swatch book which has much nicer swatches in it it has my daniel smith swatches with all the information regarding transparency and staining versus non-staining and granulating versus non-granulating. I almost forgot the contour ink. This is the whole purpose of the swatching. So this is by Hero Arts. And this is a contour ink pad. This smooth, light-toned hybrid ink is ideal for no-line colouring techniques and general stamping applications. Works with alcohol markers, coloured pencils and watercolours acid-free archival and fade resistant, waterproof for watercolours and markers, dries permanently and quickly on most papers, and it has a raised pad surface, inks any stamp size. So this is what I'll be swatching, this little baby and the Inktense pencils. So let's get into it and I'll be using my Princeton brushes. Here we go. You know, I was going to do this in my swatch book, but I think we'll make a card. This is Canson paper that I've used for card making. I think I'm going to turn this into a card. Why not? That sounds like a great idea. Okay, well, let's stamp this little baby. See how she goes. So there's your ink pad. And this is the first time I've used this. So let's see what happens. So I'm going to turn it over and ink up the back. roll it across and it may not show up that well on camera because it's designed to be a very pale ink I'm just going to stand up and stamp this down 
give it a half. Such a cute image, really cute. And I can see that really clearly. I don't think the camera's going to pick it up. Let's have a look and see. I'll tip it on its side. It's very, very pale. But I can see it and what it's going to give me is no lines. And in order to understand where I'm going with it, I'm just going to wipe that off and put it face up next to my drawing so you can see the reference for it and how I'm going to work. She doesn't have to be real. She doesn't look that real. So we don't have to make her real, but I'm going to give her a tangerine face just because I can. So I'm coming in and I'm going to move these slightly over here near my water so that I can actually get my hand in here. Being a left-hander, this is how I set up my paints. If you're a right-hander, you would have everything over that side. But this is my way to do it. So I can follow that line quite easily. And if I go outside the line or don't quite get the line, it's no big deal. So it gives you some wiggle room, which I like. And I'm going to kind of make it a bit sketchy like that and put in the neck. Now, there's no other skin showing. There's no arms. The legs seem to have little stockings on them. So I'm just going to use that. And there's two eyes in there that I want to get in as well. Let's give her blue eyes. So that's the tangerine. Now we're bringing in the sea blue. Sea blue eyes, very cute. And the little eyes just sit off to the side over here. I'm going to just draw them in. So now with my brush, and I'm going to use my tiny, tiny brush. How about that? This is a really small one. This is the size zero. I do not have a size zero brush. So look at that tip. Sorry, I'm going to just bring in some water and just drag this color around a little bit. We've got some dirt on there. There we go. Let's give her a neck. And I want to give her some shading on the face to sort of make it rounded. So we've got a light source. I don't want to bring anything near the eyes or they'll run because they're a different color, obviously. Cool, this brush, man, it's gorgeous. The point on that is divine. All right, now let's go in with her little wings. Okay, what color wings shall we give her? What about some nice fuchsia pink wings? Why not? So I'll bring in the fuchsia, which is kind of a violet shade, really, 0700. And we're going to draw in the wings. I'm just doing the outline first what I can see here. And it's very easy for me to see this. I can see this quite clearly. So it's sort of like a very, very pale gray and it does fade. It's, it's very faded sort of color. Now it's not ideal for this text in here. This is going to be very hard to replicate add something that's sort of like along the line of scribble text, like some of that acemic writing, where you can't really understand what it is that somebody's written down there. Acemic or ischemic? I'm not sure the pronunciation of that. Acemic, I would call it. Okay, now we're going to bring out some colours. This time I'm going to move up to my big brush. Ho, ho, my size 12. Yes, this does not need to be as fine going to bring some colour in. Look how easily that moves around and look at that lovely edge it's giving. Oh, that's nice. I really like that vivid edge. So good. Oh, and this brush. Man, it's great. Where I've made that acemic writing and then I'm going to pull out these fuchsia colours in the edge of the wing on both sides so it's got a little bit of a blurry effect. It really gets that colour moving. Lovely. Okay, there's our fuchsia. Okay, cleaning off my brush. Now I'm going to come in with, let's try all the brushes. Okay, this is now the size two. So get that ready. And I'm going to do this 
the outline of her dress and the stripes going across with that. Let's pick out a pretty amazing colour. I do like that apple green. It's really bright and happy. So we get apple green 1400 and I'm going to draw in the dress. Here we go. And there's a heart in the middle. So for that one, obviously we need a pink heart. I'm going to go back with the fuchsia to match the wings. Put the heart in. Nice. And I'm going to take that size two snap brush from Princeton. And oh, we don't need a water drop. There we go. Very, very nice. And I want to give that a bit of a mop. This works great for anything that has an outline on it like this. It's ideal. Cute. Now I can see these lines on the outside, so I'll know where to fill those back in. More water required. The great thing about working with watercolour pencils is you can be really, really precise, particularly if you don't mind having these outlines showing. You can see how it's got quite a vivid outline around the dress. Now I'm going to come in and add some more apple green and try and get some shading happening there. So pull it in. Like we did on the face, I want to get the same kind of shading so that there's kind of like a circle shading like the face to tile that in. Kind of looks like she might have a lovely big round plump tummy which i like that's good so that shading and then pull it out and soften it with a damp brush you don't need a whole lot of water for this which helps everything stay inside the lines So the pigments are very intense. I'm loving the colours. The colours are really happy and cheerful. Oh, so cheerful. Now I'm going to let that dry, then I'll come back in later with the pencil to draw in those lines. But I do want to put that line at the bottom of the dress, right here. And pull that up a little bit. Soften it back. All right, she's coming together. Okay, for the legs, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to do the wash and I'm going to do some shading. So the legs are going to be darker under the dress. So I'm trying to get the idea of some lights and shadow in here. And I'm actually going to pull out some of that green there so that we've got this shading that matches the shape on the face. Easy enough. Okay, now for the legs. Hmm, I'm thinking some blue. I do like that sea blue, which is the colour of her eyes. So we've used that before. Let's grab it again. And let's give her some blue stockings. So I'm just going to draw them in. Sketch down the legs. So you can see I've sorted out my shadows before I even bring in my brush. So I'm going to use my size zero, tap off some of the water onto my cloth there and just draw this down for her legs. I'm going to come back over with the dry pencil to make the lines. And I'm leaving that little space there for the frill. So I'm working a little bit pencil into damp and it's fine, it's not running, that's good. While this is still a little bit damp, I want to freshen up that edge 
Oh, wow. This is nice working into damp. Look at that. That is a great surprise. Working into damp is brilliant. It's not like markers. If you were to put a watercolour marker into damp paint, you would really lose all the pigment out of your nib of your marker. But with pencils, that doesn't actually happen. That is great. And I want to put some darker shadows down the bottom so you can see how this is starting to intensify. While we're on it, I'm going to bring back the tangerine and I'm going to add some more detail on the face. Even though it's not exactly looking like a face, it's, it's a really, I guess, naive style drawing, which is kind of cute. And because there's no water there, I should be able to shade very gently where the eyes are. You see that? So I've been able to shade it in just so, so softly. Oh, this is so much fun. It's like being a kid again. So I think sun yellow might be nice. I'm going to do the frill on her dress in sun yellow. So I'm just going to colour it in. nice and I'm going to give her some stripes when she's dry with some sun yellow as well see what I can do with blending across colors that looks pretty dry to me I'm just going to tilt her a little so I can see these lines where I'm working so I'm going over the green with some yellow there's a line there too just under the heart and they come just out on the outside of the dress. Cool. Oh, I'm making different lines. I'm just doing lines that look good for me. I like this yellow over the green, so I'm going to continue with that. Taking a little artistic license here. Now, there are some little circles down here in these lines as well. I want to bring some more of that blue in for the circles. So let's put some circles in. This is just pure pencil and it's damp. So when it's damp, oh, it's so fun when it's damp. It just lays down really slick. Is slick the right word? Just gives beautiful pigment. Oh, so nice. Fun, fun, fun. Cute. And I think I'm going to go with the poppy red and draw in the stripes on her stockings. And they go a little bit outside the lines, which I love colouring outside the lines. Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> Very freeing. And just direct pencil over the dry. all the way down to her tippy tippy toes. Okay, now I'm going to come back in with the sea blue and just sharpen up the, the feet. Sharpen the feet. Make them look a little bit more rounded, I guess. And put those shadows in under the dress where I wanted them. And still more lines in the dress needed. So let's do those in poppy red up on the dress as well. So let's put a few more of those lines in. three I think would be good and I'm going to draw some of these lines out with my brush to see what happens if I add water so let's have a look at the green and the yellow if we mix the two together this line here this line here getting some definition it's nice okay and let's see I'd like to see what happens with the poppy red because we haven't pulled this out with any color yet so we'll try it in there wow so nice really vivid really vivid and in fact I'd like to do something with the tangerine as well just to activate it and then on her stockings just let's put some water on that red and watch it come to life just a teeny tiny bit of water tiniest amount 
You can see how it really deepens that color. Wow. Perfect for detailed work. I can imagine this would work really well on florals, on modern florals in particular, for stems, for veins in leaves, for centers of flowers, all those sorts of things. I am very, very happy with these paints. I'm just going to give her a little bit more fuchsia in the top of her heart there. It's blended out a bit. Color that right in. And I could really sharpen that. It has quite a dull point on it because I've been using it in wet. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you're using them in wet, bring in your sharpener. And bring it back to a nice point again. Much better. Final couple of marks. That's great. I like that. Maybe another one into the wet here just to define those stripes. I have this obscenely bright cardstock and I think it's perfect. Look and see how pretty that is. Oh yeah, that's great. So I want to cut away some of the top and bottom so she's not quite so big. So I'll cut down the picture a little bit with my trimmer. Twelve centimeters by twenty-four centimeters. There you go. And this piece, I've cut it down to eight point five centimeters by seventeen centimeters. Okay, so I've got my Versafine Onyx Black ink, which is my favorite ink. It is a pigment ink for fine details. Great for stamping on any smooth surface wonderful and it works well for watercolor too as long as it's not cold press if it's hot pressed paper which this one is it's quite smooth it should work really well and just to ensure i get a good impression i'm going to put my stamping mat under if you don't have a stamping mat you can use a mouse mat give it a half activate the ink stamp it down let it sit Needs time to absorb. Oh, look at that, beautiful. I'm just going to let that dry. While that's drying, I will adhere the front panel. How cute is she? Oh, she's gorgeous. And this panel is absolutely flat. It hasn't walked because there hasn't been a lot of water used on it. So I'm going to just use high-tech double-sided tape from Express It. Okay, there she is, she's finished. A really big, bold card for a big, bold sentiment with that lovely stamp. And the Inktense pencils. And my beautiful new Princeton Snap brushes. Absolutely wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. Give it a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you have tried Inktense pencils and whether you're really having as much fun as I am, I, I cannot tell you how much fun they are. They're fabulous because it's a whole new way of doing watercolour where you have a lot more control than if you're using watercolour paints. I'll see you again next time. Have a great day. Bye for now.